Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Okay, so today we've come along to St. Asaph. We're gonna have a little wander through St. Asaph this morning. We're gonna have a little walk down the high street. Uh, take a little walk down by the uh, by the river and uh, we'll see what's going on. Good morning, let's go. So guys, we're right outside the cathedral at the moment. We've got a little wander around towards the back end. Um, a lot of history of this place. This cathedral, it's uh, started its life really in the mid 12th century. Um, like I say, there's loads of history. You need to have a good read up on it really. Um, I had a little read up last night and uh, it's got loads of history. It was, uh, I say it was originally built in mid 12th century and it was burnt down pretty much to the ground and then rebuilt again in the 13th century and uh, it's been used for all kinds of it was housing cattle one thing and another and uh, yeah it really is a fascinating place so this is just the back end of it now and the, uh, the old graveyard The entrance is just around the front. These old monuments. Like I say it's uh, absolutely steeped in history. I said that it was on the war path between the English and the Welsh, um, which is how it came to be uh, damaged by fire before it was rebuilt in the 1300s. Some of the lovely autumn colours as well. This is the back of the cathedral. As cathedrals go, this is um, the smallest in the UK. And it blows my mind. I mean, you look at the brickwork. You can see, obviously, back in the day, it was all carved by hand. You know, how they built these massive structures back in the day is just mind blowing. Like I say, this is a small cathedral compared to, you, know, you compare it to like to the Anglican in Liverpool. You know, it's just incredible how they even built them back in the day. Just across the road there you've got the uh, cathedral car park. You've got a little tea room here. You've got a bite to eat and a coffee. So, I don't know if it's just an age thing, but when I was at school, history, you know, just wasn't for me. Uh, talking about Normans and the Edwardians and all that, I was just, I'm not going to lie, bought the pants off me. Uh, as soon as the bell went, I was like a greyhound out of the classroom. So yeah, but it's definitely an age thing as I've got older, you know, you, re you really appreciate buildings like this. And, uh, you know, you, can, you just seem to take it in more than you do when you were at school. I appreciate it. Yeah, it's a, this is a fascinating building. I just want to show you something. Now, I mentioned before, um, this uh, cathedral was almost burned to the ground back in the 1300s. And you can see the top there, the different type of stone that was used in the rebuilding of it. And down here as well, just on them ledges at the edge of the roof. And a lot of this brick was, uh, was quarried in flint and talaka. I say it's a really interesting read, you must go on and read it. I will leave the link in the description at the end of the video. There was also talk as well that uh, this uh, cathedral is going to be relocated down to nearby Rudland. 
I'd say because it was on the warpath between the Welsh and the English. It's so interesting. And again, you just see the difference in stone on that tower. Yeah, quarried and Talaka and Flint, apparently. So there's lots of different Welsh towns mentioned in the uh, in the history of this place. Stained glass window, which sure looks amazing from the inside. And you're back around the front. You've got all this amazing colour. It's just more examples of different types of stone used in the rebuilding of it. inside guys just give you a quick glimpse inside the cathedral and there's that amazing stained glass window just mentioned on the outside something stunning Nice, back outside again guys. Just want to show you this little uh, doorway. I'm not sure what this used to be. Leave it to your own imaginations. Some sort of prison I would imagine. I could be wrong but that's what it looks like doesn't it? Like a dungeon. Okay guys, just got to tell you this quick story before we move on. Just heard those church bells just ringing out then. And it always it reminds me of something that happened to me a few years ago now. I used to get the train to work. Uh, all of you know I live in Abergelly. So I used to get the train up to Landino Junction early in the morning. And uh, I was out early one morning. And uh, when I got into Abergelly I had a choice to make. Do I follow the main road down to the uh, train station or... Do I take the shortcut through the uh, graveyard? It's about six in the morning. I'll take the shortcut. Knock about five minutes off my journey. Anyway, oh yeah, here we go. So I started walking through the uh, graveyard, just following the path. Just about start to go light, but it is dark still. And uh, you know, the way your mind plays tricks on you, I'm terrible for it. Anyway, I'm halfway down the path, and all of a sudden, the church bells rang. Bah! <laughs> I'm not kidding you. Jump, talk about jump. People say, "Oh, you made me jump." Well, really, I jumped. I must have jumped two feet off the ground. I'm telling you. Oh my god. So uh, yeah, that was the last time I'd done that. <laughs> Just left five minutes earlier next time. Anyway, let's crack on.
Anyway, so we're just going to uh, take a walk down the high street now. With that magnificent cathedral behind. So, St. Asaph, or Clanelwy, whatever you prefer to say. Clanelwy is the, uh, the Welsh name for St. Asaph. Dates back, um, again, it's a, the earliest recordings of St. Asaph is in the 1200s, um, when the cathedral and the uh, parish church, which we'll come to in a minute, was first uh, recorded. Um, there's no archaeological uh, evidence at all that suggests um, any Christianity here before the 1200s, so there you go. All the Christmas lights have been uh, mounted onto the lampposts now. I'm getting switched on in a couple of weeks' time, I think. Stunning views just over the uh, top of the buildings there. Felton House. Look at that building just across the other side there, established 1760. So St. Asif is absolutely full. These old buildings. And I always wonder to myself, you know, like that, 1760, what did the land around here look like back then? You know? Just feels more than likely it was. So the uh, history now just fascinates me. Just on the right here, guys. This is the uh, Saint Asaph Saint. Can be on Saint Asaph Parish Church, which again it's dated in 1300s, just like the cathedral. That's a beautiful little uh, churchyard. Which we'll take a little wander around. There's the entrance to the church. Across all this up in lights, really stands out at night as well. Past here, I was working on a Saturday night, it was all lit up. And just there, if you can make it out on camera, like tombstones. Okay, let's carry on. When you look at the stonework, it's uh, exactly the same as the cathedral. So I'm assuming this must have suffered damage as well <laughs> back in the 1300s.
So we're just at the bottom of the high street now, guys. Just before the uh, the bridge over the river, and we're at the Bowling Green. Just here. And you've got the uh, park just the other side, the hedge as well. And then just across from the Bowling Green, you've got some public toilets. Just here. Opening times, spring half nine till half three. And half nine till half five. Spring bank holiday in the May to 30th of September. Toilets are free as well. Just on the right you've got the uh, cenotaph. the bridge. It's on the left side there guys, you've got uh, the football fields, you just follow the path. That's where you'll find the football pitch where St. Asif play. So this is the River Elwy, flows through St. Asaph. Looking quite calm today. St. Asaph has been known to flood occasionally. Um, See the uh, river defences were strengthened a few years ago. You see over the wall there. It last flooded, I think it was about seven or eight years ago. It's a flooding event. Uh, it's quite extensive, really. Flooded right up to the uh, A55 junction. Flooding the uh, Talardi. That was flooded, the uh, pub that's on the uh, roundabout there. So as you can see, the uh, St. Asaph is on the uh, main bus route from Denby into Rill. So if you uh, fancy a little ride out on the bus in the Rill end, number 51, and we'll take you straight into St. Asaph. Here, car wash. I just want to point out these uh, stunning old houses. 
anyone who watches my channel will know I'm a big fan of old houses. Yellow brick is just stunning. I'm not sure how old these houses are, but yeah, beautiful. And then just across the road there, at the plough. Really popular uh, pub around here, um, dog friendly, new meals. Always really busy in there. During Covid and uh, all the restrictions are on, they built these little huts for social distancing. So we just stopped off for a nice little uh, refreshing lime and soda. Very nice, the end of the plough. It's been a while since I've been here, I've got to come back for a meal one day. Yeah, it's really nice. If you're thinking of coming here, definitely worth a visit. Do nice meals in here. So they've also got a little watering station. You've got your dog with you. Right there, dog menu. This guy will save you. <laughs> We've got some little dog treats. Brilliant. <laughs> okay. So, just coming out the back end of the uh, plough now. It's your main car park. And then just across the road there, you've got the library. So, we're just going to follow it on past the library and over the bridge. Back in towards the centre of St. Asaph. So you can go two ways when you get to this point. That way, it'll take you back over the uh, towards the main bridge in St. Asaph. Just to show you quickly that's the main car park with the plough, it's absolutely huge. So you'll never have any problems parking. It's just a river there. We're going to follow the path this way over this bridge. So you just stay on this path and just keep walking and eventually come into Rudland. A couple of miles. That's the uh, city trail map. Pont Bay Guard, 
29th of August 2009, Pont Beam Bridge, Big R, I'm not sure what Big R is to be fair, I don't know, Big R Bridge. Oh, you're a responsible dog walker. Look after your dog, keep your dog in sight. Walk no more than four dogs in a group. And always keep your dog on the lead and away from livestock. So, St. Asaph, guys. It's the second smallest city in the UK. Um, it's had city status since uh, 2012. Um, that's because it's got a cathedral, so... It, you automatically think it's uh, it applies automatically to be um, a city, but it wasn't. Uh, it did apply uh, before 2012, but the application was turned down and then he reapplied and it was granted. So yeah, since 2012 it's uh, it's been a city, uh, second smallest in the UK. Does anybody know what the smallest is? Let me know in the comments. Okay guys, that's the end of this little walk around the uh, city of St. Asaph. Lovely little walk, really interesting place to come and visit, especially up there with the uh, cathedral and all that, and a lovely walk alongside the river. And don't forget to have a little pint in the, uh, in the plough as well. So uh, yeah, take care of yourself, don't forget to hit the subscribe button for me guys, it's absolutely free, it doesn't cost you anything at all. And uh, make sure you hit that uh, thumbs up for me too, it just helps the video out. Okay, thanks for watching and I'll see you again. Bye for now. Amazing grace how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found. Was blind, but now I see. Twas grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace. My fears relieved How precious did That grace appear The hour I first be.